Namaste. Welcome to UGC E Parshala for Postgraduate Studies. I am Anita Khanna and I teach Japanese in Jawaharlal Nehru University. Welcome to the paper on pre-modern Japanese literature. This paper is broadly divided into three parts. Period wise, it is ancient period, medieval and early modern period. The ancient and medieval literature you will find in the Japanese text as Chuko Bungaku. However, in this paper it is given in a chronological order as Ko Chu Kin Se Bungaku. So the module is in Japanese not titled as Chu Ko Bungaku but as Ko Chu Kin Bungaku. Let's look at the objectives of this paper. Broadly speaking, our aim is to understand how the poetic creation in the mythological age took place and how it was influenced by the Chinese script and literature. How the creation of nation states of Yamato gave impetus to the development of Japanese literature, especially the written literature. How the advent of Buddhism influenced literary creations in the form of Kayaku Butten, which means the Chinese translations of Buddhist scriptures. Next, under the influence of Buddhism, how the Japanese prose flourished. Next, under the influence of Buddhism, how the Japanese prose flourished in various forms of fiction, poetic diaries, miscellaneous essays, entertaining tales of humor and wit, as well as historical narratives and tragic tales of warfare. Ultimately, it heads towards the modernity with an impressive lucidity to adapt to the diverse changes in the Meiji period. Now look at the contents. Content-wise, this course is divided into eight parts or I would call it units with four papers in each unit. Unit 1. This part deals with the chronology of ancient period extended up to middle ages in order to present an overview of the overall scheme. Next. Next it deals with the cultural aspects of ancient period and throw further light on the various aspects and keywords of ancient culture. Let's look at unit 2. The four papers in unit 2 throw light on the ancient most work of Kojiki and Fudoki. It starts with the explanations about Kojiki, which is also called the records of ancient matters in English, and deals with the preface of this Japanese epic. Then some of the legends presented in this work are also presented, and further we elaborate on to the classical work named Fudoki, which deals with the provincial records basically of geography 
and to some extent of the legends and tales of each province. So here we learn about some of the legends associated with provinces. In Unit 3, we move on to the ancient Japanese poetry. Here, with the first largest collection of Japanese poetry called Manyoshu, we learn about its poets and move on to the first Japanese poetry collection, Kokinwakashu in vernacular Kana script. The emphasis on the preface of Kokin Wakashu and deals with how the Japanese poetry called Waka developed and flourished. Next, Unit 4 deals with the fiction called Monogatari in Japanese. It gives a classification of the types of fiction which prevailed in Heian period and further elaborate on to give an outline of the famous epic or rather the famous novel called Genji Monogatari. We move on to the next unit which introduces the two new genres of Japanese literature especially the prose literature, which had a long-lasting impact on the Japanese literature to give its uniqueness. And these are the poetic diaries and miscellaneous essays. In Unit 6, we study about the how from aristocracy the warrior class came to rule the society and politics and the narratives of war literature called Gunki Monogatari are discussed. Also a special style of entertaining tales called Otogi Zoshi, which were popular during the subsequent Muromachi period, the period of Ashikaga shoguns and how it culminated into the early modern period, which is called Kinsei. Unit 7, we learn about the works of Tokugawa period from Genroku period onwards, about the society, about the Gesaku or the popular literature and the country that under the rule of Tokugawa Shogun did remarkable progress in literacy and so the readership. Next, finally, under this course, we will study about the theme which are based on or rather influenced by Buddhism in Japanese literature with reference to Buddhist scriptures, as I mentioned earlier, as Kanyaku Buddhin and Setsuwa, the discourse narratives. After studying this course, the learners will have a comprehensive understanding of the key terms and vocabulary associated with pre-modern Japanese literature how it developed from the oral to written literature with the changes in the script, concepts, and the readership. You will also understand that how there has been a consistent development in both poetry and prose since the ancient times with the poetic meters of 5757 of Kojiki lasting even till date and also a unique blend of poetry and prose or rather prose and poetry prevailed. With the 
consistent progression in the combination of poetry and prose or rather prose and poetry prevails keywords of this module number 25 of paper 15 ko to densho oral transmission or handing over of source material through the word of mouth before it is codified from one generation to the other norito the ritual shinto prayers shinto is the native japanese religion and the shinto prayers in the ancient times were recited at the ceremonies and rituals associated with various elements of nature like sun moon wind rain sea etc although these existed in oral form and were transmitted from one generation to the other these were carefully composed prayers and the key factor or the key concept that gave them the literary form was the concept of mana which means that magical power lies in the word the way one speaks and recites it and if a word is mispronounced then it doesn't bring about the desirable results this concept in japan is crystallized in the form of a term called kotodama kotodama is a combination of two kanji characters one is koto kotoba and the other is tamashi or re the first kanji means word and the second character means spirit the norito exercised a strong influence on the later poetic forms these prayers were later codified and standardized in a work called engishki which means the code compiled in the engi era the content of these poems or prayers was based on plantation and fertility rites also there were prayers for longevity and prosperity of the yamato state there were prayers to ward off evil and impurities needless to say it influenced the poetry of the written form like manyashu semmyogaki semmyogaki was the style used to write japanese or wabun using chinese characters manyashu and waka the inception of written japanese poetry using the newly formed native script which was developed after gojoon was set up which is the chart of japanese sounds and manyogana was developed on the basis of that this facilitated the writing of manyoshu the biggest collection of japanese poetry and it later saw the seeds of the development of waka poetry when the writing system of japanese was established these waka anthologies which were commissioned by the center starting with kokin waka sho which is famous for its preface called kanajo scribed by the famous scholar of chinese poetry and waka as well named kinotsurayuki 
Needless to say, this tradition of commissioned waka anthologies, starting with Kokin Waka Sho, resulted in compilation of 22 such anthologies in the years to come. The next term is Gi Shi Wajinden, which means the history of Gi dynasty, which was one of the three ancient dynasties of North China. And Wa is the country of Wa, that is Japan. Here it denotes the person of Wa or Yamato or Japan. This is the name by which Japan was called by Chinese in ancient period. And it seems the queen of Wa that supposedly is Queen Himiko sent a tribute of four male slaves and six female slaves along with gifts of cloth to the emperor in 239 AD. Here, emperor implies the emperor of China, that of Gi dynasty. In the Middle Ages in Japan, the concept that was all prevalent or omnipresent in all the literary works is that of Mappo or Mujokan. Mappo and Mujokan are correlated in the sense that Mappo is the concept of degeneration of law or means the Buddhist law. So it was based on the prophecies of Buddha according to which after the demise of Buddha the period of righteous law that is the Shoho will prevail for 500 years during this time, the law will be sustained by those who learnt it directly from the Buddha. Subsequently, in the next thousand years, the teachings of Buddha would be destroyed. But due to the virtues of the residual law, part of the virtues will still remain. So, by making efforts, one can hope to attain Buddhahood. And so, this is called Zoho, or the period of imitative Buddhist law. Thereafter comes the period of degeneration of Buddhist law, or Dharma, which will mark the age of Mappo, or the end of law. In this age of Mappo, the Buddha's teachings will cease to exist and there will be no further enlightenment anymore. Here I have included some of the key terms. There is a complete list of these terms pertaining to the pre-modern age and you can find it in the quadrant of learn more quadrant 3 of the e-text <laughs>